Greetings and welcome to Kettering College Convocation Conversation. I'm going to be talking today with the Chief Quality Officer for Kettering Medical Center, Dr. Jeffrey Weinstein. Let's go on inside. Dr. Weinstein, thank you so much for coming down the hall from, from Kettering Medical Center and joining me for a couple of minutes to talk about Kettering College, our student faculty and staff coronavirus this, this fall and what we can do to stay safe and healthy. Thanks for being here. Well, you're very welcome and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to give some uh, recommendations. It's obviously critical for everyone to stay safe and healthy this year. Uh, and there are certainly some things that we can all do that can uh, promote that and uh, allow us to have our academic uh, semester as safely as possible. Now, now Dr. Weinstein, as, as Chief Quality Officer for Kettering Medical Center, what have been the major things that you've been seeing that have been most helpful in the hospital setting to combat coronavirus and the spread of COVID? Sure, well, first of all, just a little bit of background. Uh, of course, COVID hit in Ohio in late March, and at that first peak, we really did not have a lot of COVID infection. We had not many patients in the hospital, but we had a, sort of a low peak. And then it kind of faded in May, but starting in mid-June, it really, really uh, peaked in Ohio, really, really went up in the uh, Southwest Ohio area. Uh, and our hospital uh, units got much more full with COVID patients. Some of them were on ventilators. We unfortunately have had a number of deaths. What happened in the last four to six weeks has been a big shift. We now have fewer patients in the hospital, fewer patients dying, but more cases in the community as the age has shifted really more into the you know, under 20 years old and then the 20 to 39 year old age groups. And of course that would include high school students and college students. You know, just, just really quickly, do you think that that represents uh, more a shift in the demographic of the patients or is there something going on with the virus itself? Is it mutating in some way or do we know? No, it doesn't seem to be a change in the virus. It, it really appears to be probably everyone got sort of lockdown fatigue. Uh, people started going out with friends, going to bars, going to parties, going to restaurants. Of course, we've opened restaurants. So I, I think it has more to do with that. Uh, and we're seeing this around the country. Certainly uh, everywhere in the country, there's been a shift to younger people, which in a, in a way it's good because they don't get as sick. They often don't get hospitalized, but they certainly can transmit the virus to contacts, whether that might be a parent, a grandparent, or anyone that they're in contact with, who in turn would have a higher risk of getting sick from COVID. So Dr. Weinstein, uh, given all of that, what kind of big picture recommendations would you give for our population, our students, but also our faculty and staff? Absolutely. So again, I think by far the most important thing is wearing a mask. So wearing a mask while you're around other people, if you're certainly within six feet, especially in an indoor space, and what that does is it really, my wearing the mask protects you more so than it protects me. You wearing the mask protects me more than it protects you. But they do give us some protection as well. So we're not, you know, aerosolizing the virus out into the space around us. Uh, of course, in addition to that, um, keeping the distance, as I mentioned, if you're outside and you're not wearing a mask, you want to stay away, you know, six feet away from other people if you can. Hand hygiene after you've touched high uh, touch uh, uh, objects such as doorknobs or you know the arm rail arm arm ch rail chair on the chairs uh, okay. surfaces maybe in, in a classroom or in a lab like a, a desktop uh, frequent hand hygiene would be uh, recommended as well. Great, Dr. Weinstein, are there is, is there anything else we can do as a as a community to really tamp down the spread of coronavirus? Sure, again, I think a, a big thing would be what are we doing outside of the hours when we're here, perhaps on campus mm -hmm. or we're in the classroom, uh, and going to restaurants, going to bars, things like, uh, or large parties or cookouts where you're probably not gonna be wearing a mask. Those kind of activities do increase the risk. I think, um, uh, you know, again, as I mentioned, keeping the safe distance, one thing that's actually important this year, and we're really coming up to it, is influenza vaccination. So everyone mm -hmm. should get their flu vaccine because there's a lot of concern about what's the interaction gonna be with COVID and influenza, as well as just the basic issue of if you get sick with respiratory symptoms, which one is it? Is it COVID or is it flu? Um, and 
the more that we get our flu shots, the less severe our flu season will be this year, and it'll kind of avoid that situation. Well, well, that makes so much sense because the most important uh, principle for us here at the college is if you're sick, stay home. Don't come to campus. And, and you're right. We're not going to know right away if symptoms are coming from coronavirus or from influenza. Well, that, that's exactly right. And typically, uh, you know, we would always expect someone, especially if they have a fever, cough, respiratory symptoms, to, to not come in. And, but one of the tricky things about coronavirus and why these masks are so important is that we know that a large percentage of patients can be infected but not even know it and have no symptoms at all, yet they still can transmit the virus to others. Unlike influenza, where typically you would not transmit to someone else unless you were really sick, and so people tend to stay at home. Uh, so that's why the mask and the hand hygiene and the distancing is so important with the coronavirus. Uh, it's kind of insidious in that way. You know, Dr. Weinstein, you were so helpful to the college officials in, in drafting and, and formulating our back to college plan. So you're really one of the people that we have to thank for the way that we're operating Kettering College this fall. And I really want to thank you for your partnership on that. And thank you for coming in today to talk to, talk to me and to talk to Kettering College about how we can stay safe and healthy this fall. Thanks very much. You're welcome. It's a pleasure, and I'm a big fan of uh, higher education, and I think it's uh, an area that's uh, critical to us. And uh, everyone, please be safe.